All right. Welcome and thank you to another um, of Michelle Hoffman's liner notes. <laughs> liner notes are the insight the artists or curators offer into what's really going on at the time of creation and what inspired the recording to be what it is. Michelle Hoffman's liner notes is imperative insight and curated wisdom that you need to inspire you with all the resources you need to enjoy balance and an abundant life. I helped, I help business owners and CEOs focus on their zone of genius, um, get the time that they need and want in their life to be creative and make sure that they have all the revenue that they need by helping managers develop high performing teams to meet the revenue goals. Discover how I can help you and your company succeed at lightthesparklady at gmail.com. It's L-I-G-H-T, the spark, S-P-A-R-K-L-A-D-Y at gmail.com. I'm very, very honored to introduce to you Monica Dubay. Monica helps people shift their mindset to get out of their own way. And if you want to connect with Monica, she will give you her website and an opportunity at the end of this webinar. You can connect with her at monicadubay.com, M-O-N-I-C-A-D-U-B-A-Y.com. Monica, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, will you tell us a little bit about your clients and what you do to help them create their dream come true? Absolutely. And I'm, it's such a pleasure to be here with you, Michelle. Um, uh, I, I primarily work with women entrepreneurs, a lot of coaches, a lot of healers, people that really want to make impact to change our world into a better place and have, you know, compassion and love lead the way from the chaos that we're in now to a, a much more peaceful and, um, you know, heart centered way of, of being. And what that has required is that, you know, you're willing to go deep into your own subconscious to let go of your fear of being where you are and not being where you want to be, um, but truly going into the depth of your, who am I to do this, wherever your self-doubt is. Uh, maybe you don't know how to manage money very well. You know, there's, there's all those thoughts and beliefs that we bring into entrepreneurship that, that can really get in our way. I faced a lot of them myself, and now <laughs> I've helped a lot of women come out of that and, and really begin to create the business of their dreams. So how do people find you when, you're, when you've got a client? What, can you give us an example of like um, a client who may have found you and what inspired that and how you helped that, per, that entrepreneur go from chaos to a peaceful, heart-centered way of living? Absolutely. Well, I've, I've done a lot of um, these kind of programs and I, and I have my own Facebook group now and, and I do some um, a YouTube, I have a YouTube channel, but I, I'm basically a guest on other people's platforms and people find me that way. Um, the best example of someone I've helped has been someone who was, she, she had chronic fatigue and she couldn't get out of bed. She had two kids. She was living in Denver and she really didn't know what she wanted to do. She had a she was just finishing up a coaching certification, but she was kind of lost and she wasn't clear on what she wanted. And um, we worked for quite a while, but we got to the depth of every single belief that she had that was holding her back. Wow. And she, you know, she was married. Her husband had, throughout this journey, she lost, he lost his job, but then they collaborated and they talked together and they ended up starting their own business together which was amazing. Like it, she didn't become a coach after all, but she opened a, a healing business with uh, CBD products and they are now grossing over a million dollars a year within their first year. So that's a really cool success story that I, that I love to share because of her ability to come from chronic fatigue to, you know, the CEO of an incredible business. Yeah, going from a point where you feel like you don't know what to do and you're in pain all the time, whatever pain that might be, be it a physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain, knowing that there's got to be something more, but not knowing how to make the transition 
to release those limiting beliefs that you can actually be enough and create an opportunity for yourself to be more like you were using in this example with this client of yours who, you know, when she realizes she can't get out of bed, that should be signal enough to go, well, hmm, what can I do? And what she could do was tremendous in building a million dollar company in collaboration with her spouse, which kind of has all, I mean, that's sort of just a loving moment of truth right there. <laughs> and go from, I can't get out of bed to, wow, we've created a successful business together. That's <laughs> notable. That's notable. How did you find yourself in the situation where you realized that you could help people in this way? Well, I had been working um, since, since I was 30 years old. I was in New York City and I was a musician. I'd given up music because it was impossible to do it for a living. But I was a classically trained clarinetist and um, I kind of hit a bottom once I, I got into corporations and I started working there and worked in big biz buildings with high heels and you know traveling around a bit and I just didn't feel like I belonged. And all of a sudden I got super depressed. And for about six months, I was just like, I can't believe, I don't know what to do with myself. I was married, but my husband had his own business and he was real busy with that. And I was just lost. And what I realized was it was kind of a miracle because I got on my knees and I just said, please help me. And the next thing I knew I had um, found this little book called You Can Heal Your Life by Louise Hay, who is now is of course <laughs> she became this very popular publisher but at the time, I think this was her first book and her only book. And it was, you know, 1990. And it brought me out of depression because I realized I had the power to work with my own thoughts and to right. let go of these beliefs and to really start to co connect with my higher self. And a voice started speaking to me right away and I started to feel better. I got healthier. I found a chiropractor. I did things that really supported my growth and expansion. And then I found my spiritual path, which was A Course in Miracles. And that, that became the, basically the foundation of everything I did after that. Um, beautiful. Because sometimes we don't always know. what it, uh, I have a saying that I share with my clients. You don't always know when it's wrong, but you know when it's right. So when you're lost, you're just going on your way. And it could be like you're going on a journey and you think you're going in the right direction. You could be going through your life. And you could be working and digging that uh, routine every day of get up, get dressed. Um, you were saying go up the skyscraper every day to your office, no matter how you're feeling, because you feel like it's your job and that's what you're supposed to do when you agreed to do it every day. Mm -hmm. And we develop these routines and these ruts that we get into, which don't necessarily serve us. And it's not until we feel lost or depressed that we might take the moment and ask ourselves the question, be it in your story, you're like, I literally got down on my knees and went, there must be something more. <laughs> and then you, you know, you found the tools that you needed to find the something more, either through the Louise Hay book, The Power to Work on Your Own Thoughts really makes the difference. Um, because you can heal yourself. I mean, she of course has gone on, well, she uh, created opportunities for so many people to share their voice. Um, and that's really what you're doing now because you experienced your own journey and, and you gained the tools and understanding um, to manifest the, you know, as we do in the course of miracles and the law of attraction and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So when people come to you, what kinds of things do they ask of you and how do you help them achieve those? Well, I started my coaching and healing the mind business um, about five years ago. And uh, up till then though, I had been doing retreats with the Course in Miracles. I've been traveling the world with the course and I'd really been doing a lot of live events, um, some private practice, but mostly live events. And then, and then I became a massage therapist and I was doing energy healing, which is all a part of what I do as well is really working with the, the energy behind the thoughts right. and um, right. it takes you into the esoteric, like the past lives and all that stuff. And I work with angels, you know, so there's, there's just so much growth that's happened. 
But I think what people really come to me with now is a sense of really knowing that they want more from life and they want to connect to their higher self. They want to have that certainty, that knowing that what they're choosing to do with their life is what they really want. And that there's no way that someone else can tell them that they have to go inside and discover it for themselves. So is what you do actually sort of acting as a guide when someone is feeling lost and they say there must be something more, they want more from life. You're actually the guide to help them go deep and figure this out on that journey. Does that sound right? Cause it sounds sort yeah. of like you explain. Yeah. It. I, yeah, it's, it's, it's the depth of the work is that you're going to have your obstacles, right? I mean, we all have obstacles, but the, but really the, the biggest obstacle we have is ourself, our self identity, who we think we are. Uh-huh. And that, and that personality identity is actually often the problem because you, you have identified yourself by your past and by what you've been through. And so there's, you know, I've been through a lot of transformation using many different methods, but what you don't know that you don't know is right. that the story that you keep telling is what's blocking you. And so I get you to really learn to recognize the story for the story and help you to see that that can be given up like that. And something else happens when you do that. So this is where the magic happens. Will you share with us? I mean, let's, Let's see if we can get some of these incredible tips and tools and ideas because you're, you're sharing with us this great stuff. So will you share some more about how you guide clients um, to unblock their own potential by removing the blocks and obstacles of maybe what happened in their life in the past or in past lives, as you were saying, mm-hmm. um, or what they're embodying you know, through energy work, like you're talking about. So give us some ideas of some of the stuff you do when you're working with your clients. So how I do it. Okay. So I have really gleaned through all the 30 years of doing mindset and not mindset, but mind training is what I call it. Uh, Working with your thought patterns about, about what you think, who you think you are and where you think you're limited. Like a lot of us have, you know, this poor self-esteem, right? Or we think I'm not good enough. Well, everyone has that, but it's, it's a lie, but we do tell it to ourselves. And what I help you to do is to discern between that voice. That's like this little, like say your little monkey mind in the back, but it's always attacking you and saying this stuff to you. I help you to discern that you actually have a connection to your higher self always available to you. And you can choose to step out of that little voice perspective which is never seeing anything clearly anyway, because it doesn't know who it is, to recognizing you're at, you have access to your higher self like now. And you can always take that vantage point and give that part of you that's all upset compassion, love, forgiveness, mm-hmm. and hold it and let go of what you thought that meant, you know, because we've given meaning to everything. We've given meaning to our stories. We've given meaning to someone breaking up with you or having a a marriage fall apart or kids desert you or not want to talk to you. We give meaning to that as though that had to do with um, who we think we are. And of course we do. We have, that's our human mind. That's how it works. But there are methods, very quick methods that help you to shift it out, out of your mindset and claim that is not true. And I thank God that's not true. So it's quick forgiveness of really just letting go of that perspective right now. I help you to feel it, embrace it, feel the experience of it in your body. You know, I'm not good enough. What does that feel like in my body? Mm. And then I ask you a simple question. Are you willing to let that go? And then poof, you let it go. And the whole world opens up. Like it literally is a, a shift in your consciousness that's actually been waiting for you to say, yes, I'm willing to let that go for years. And once you get the hang, a hang of it, the hang of it, or how to, how to do that for yourself, which is what I teach you in all my programs, mm-hmm. then you have power. Suddenly you can go, oh, that's just that little voice. That's not me. And I know what to do. I know how to release it. That's so, my goal is to help everybody learn that. 
Right. So it's more than just um, listening to our, the inner voice, but it's actually, you know, it's, it's sort of like you're teaching all of us to give ourselves permission to free up those things that aren't serving us so that we can step into who we are becoming. Um, yeah. And that's, I mean, it's, it's choosing to step into our power, if that's what you were saying. And it give meaning to these negative events and you give us permission to let them go. So that we and learn and learn that it's not that hard to do that, even though you may have been suffering with it forever. Like so, I, I healed something the other day that was something I had in, with me since I was four years old because I had a younger sister who died and I've been affected by that my whole life. And when I, you know, I've gone deep enough to really get to the, the bottom of it. And really it's the fear of being alone was huge for me. And I was able to look at that recently and question it. Is this really true? Um, true. You know, and it just, is it true? Is it true? Like I do Byron Katie's work. I do a lot of different types of methods that work perfectly, beautifully. Within 20 minutes, you could be free of something that you've been carrying your entire life. And it's just, it's phenomenal to me how once we learn this, we truly come into our own power as healers, as light workers, or just as people that want to help other people. Right. Like, Right. So you've been doing this for 30 years, you said, to some degree. Yeah. Um, how did you even become aware that suddenly you needed to address this particular issue with, I'm sorry, for the loss of your sister? Mm. Well, I don't, it just kind of comes up in the midst of things, you know, in the midst of your life. Mm -hmm. Like I had a breakup recently and I moved to Florida um, a few months ago and and suddenly I thought I was moving here because I had this relationship. And then suddenly that fell apart right after COVID happened and everything collapsed. And I just was like, I can't even go out. You know, how am I going to make friends here? So right. it was very upsetting. And I have been really doing very, very deep work since then. Uh -huh. nice. To me, this is the longest spiritual retreat I've ever had. <laughs> like, Absolutely. <laughs> the whole world got that mission all at once. <laughs> yeah. And so... I'm using it to support myself rather than hurt myself. And at first I really didn't like it. I was very upset. And a lot of people, you know, witnessed that I was very upset that I had to be alone so much because I have a big family. I'm from a family of nine kids and I have two kids of my own that are in New York city. When all this started to happen, I was, I was in a lot of turmoil. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I have to say, it's really been tremendous how by applying these methods, I've been able to shift a lot of it and just really come into the acceptance that, yeah, this is how it is right now for me. And I don't have to make that mean something tragic or terrible, or, you know, I don't know when I'm going to see, I don't know if I'm going to see them. I don't know. Are they going to let me go into the state of Maine or New York now? I mean, there's all this craziness. And I, but I realize that, you know, the growth and the challenge that we all share is how do I face my life and not go into total reaction all the time? How do I have power over it? How do I master my mind so I can master my life? And that's really what my business is all about. That's what I love to do. That was a good one. Master your mind to master your life. It um, comes from the inside out. It's not, it's not about having right. or doing. It's about who you're being. Right. So we don't always get the world we want, but it's learning how to work within the constraints of the world that we have. And as you were saying, identify what is coming toward us so that we can be proactive rather than being pushed by pain. We're pulled by these positive opportunities that we can create in that way. And with that, it sounds like you're able to coach and guide people to do that in every aspect of their personal and professional lives so that no matter what variables that are happening in the world around us, we can navigate the right path for us at that time. So you, you've mentioned that you help people personally. You also said that you help them professionally. Will you share some of those stories with us? Sure. So, so it was really interesting because when I got the idea 
that just kind of landed on me um, five years ago and I was wondering what to do next. I'd given up my massage practice and I moved back to the East Coast um, from the state of Wisconsin where, where I had lived for 14 years. I just, I sat there going, what do I do now? You know, I knew, I knew I didn't want to just keep doing massage. It was too limited and it was as much as I enjoyed healing people. I felt myself go into this. There's more that I can do because I'm so good, good with the mind, right? Mm -hmm. But I didn't value that enough to know that it was really something pretty special until I started to do it with people. And I got all this information about you're a creator. Uh, you can heal your life. You can create your life the way you desire. And the, some of the main problems that we all share are our money blocks. You know, how do we hold ourselves back with money? Why do we make ourselves less power, less than powerful with money? There's all stories that we, we hold on to. And it comes down to basically the same, like 25 beliefs that we all have about money or self-worth. And once I put all these programs together, I started working with people, they started having big shifts. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, I guess this is going to work. <laughs> I didn't know until I started doing it. It had to be an experience, you know, rather than my, I didn't plan any of it. It's literally my, my being willing to look at, here's a person who struggles with, you know, she's in an abusive marriage or, you know, she's um, chronic fatigue or she has Parkinson's. Like whatever the situation is, it can be healed. It can be shifted mm -hmm. so that you can step into your power as a, as, a, as a woman, as an entrepreneur, if that's what you choose to do, but I tend to work with a lot of entrepreneurs because that's, that's who I want to work with. Right. And that's, so the business came about like you can heal your mind, you can heal your life. That's the name of it. And then I thought, well, it shouldn't be that hard to do it. Well, there's lots of pitfalls that we fall into as business owners, you know, that we don't foresee. And uh, so there's the business side that, that has to be dealt with as well. So you were talking about master your mind to master your life, to create your life the way that you deserve and dream that it could be. And you talk about how to release money blocks along the way. Will you address how you, you know, how do you release money blocks? Because that, I mean, just saying release your money block, I'd be like, okay, money block be gone. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, right? <laughs> I mean, so share with yeah. us a little bit about that. Well, that's what I kept asking was like, well, how, I, I feel that I have these blocks to, you know, making more money and being more successful. And so I intuitively wrote down uh, about 21 to 23 beliefs about money that mm -hmm. I felt were prominent in my consciousness. And then when I was starting to do the classes, you know, other people were like, oh, yeah, I have that one too. Oh, yeah, I have that one too. And I have a quick way to release it. And that was also given to me intuitively was, um, and I teach people how it's, it's something you learn. There's, there's three or four different ways that I teach you, but one of them is to simply go, I forgive myself for believing that. Oh, that's not true. I thank God that's not true. The truth is, and then you state the opposite, very, very but it's, it's a practice and you've got to learn it and you've got to embrace it. And that's the shortest one I can give you is that I forgive myself for believing that it's not true. Thank God it's not true. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's, it so, can be quick. So people can do this on their own to be sure. Um, but it might take a little longer or they may, you know, lose life opportunities in the process. Um, what kinds of things have you observed or seen with people that if they don't get um, guidance or help through this, that they could be self-sabotaging or yeah. be derailed? What kinds right. of things? So, so the Sabbath, that's my other class is self-sabotaging beliefs. Okay. <laughs> because <laughs> that's what I found is like there's money and then there's self-sabotage. And when we don't address those beliefs, we're, we're ruled by them. And we all have the same ones. It's really, I mean, some maybe a little different flavor. I mean, I had a client who, uh, I dealt with a lot of people with lack and scarcity, but then I also dealt with somebody who was a millionaire, but she was afraid to spend her money and she was afraid to like um, invest and she was afraid of the money that she had. And she has all kinds of anxiety about that. So that was another set of beliefs, you know, how to manage it, what to do with it, how to trust people with it, um, right. how to trust yourself with it. 
And, and so there's, there's a myriad of beliefs that we all have, and you can't see them yourself. Unfortunately, we, are, we have our own blind spots, and everybody else can see them except us because we really believe in our story. We believe that we're powerless. We believe that that terrible thing happened to us when we were two or four or six or 10 that defined who we are today. And so you have to have a hell of a lot of self awareness to do it on your own, which I've right. developed, but right. I've, I mean, I n I've never been without a coach or mentor in 30 years. So you've actually mentioned this a couple of times because we, it's really hard to see both your strengths, your superpowers in yourself, but also your weaknesses, because we tell ourselves stories that this is who we are. And why would we change who we are based on what the building blocks were to create who we are? So yeah, you can do it on your own, um, but you're gonna miss this stuff because having a different vantage point, a different perspective, um, who actually has your best interest in mind. I refer to that when I talk about building an advisory board, just like companies have a board of directors. I, yeah. I coach people to build their own advisory board, but that gives you, you know, a bird's eye view from a different perspective with somebody who's shared their experiences with you. Um, so what would signal somebody or trigger them to say, you know what, of course I can do this on my own. I've done this on my own my whole life but that I am a, you know, a busy executive and I want more. There must be something more. And you know, I don't want to just keep going into that same groove I've been running in my whole life. And I go to work, I go up to the, you know, the skyscraper, I do my same job and I don't feel like I belong. So I might feel depressed and I might feel lost. And if you don't know how to heal your mind to heal your life, you know, are, what, what is the actual signal that would be like, oh my God, I just experienced that. And that is a signal that would tell me or somebody like me, a busy executive and entrepreneur to reach out to somebody like you, Monica. Well, what? I would have to ask, you'd have to ask yourself, what area of your life are you still struggling with? Because nobody's got a perfect life. And you could be a millionaire, you could be a massively successful entrepreneur. And there are lots of stories of those, those wonderful people who hit a bottom because they seem to have it all, but they're not feeling their life. They're not, it feels like they're not a part of it or it's happening to someone else. And, you know, success isn't always about money. It's about fulfillment and vitality. And con to me, it's about connection to who you really are. And knowing that your purpose that you came here for, which you often we don't know what that is. It takes a lot of soul searching to find out what that is. But, you know, going deep enough to know, I really am fulfilling my purpose. I really do feel that what I'm doing is creating something that is going to help people after I'm gone. You know, we're, it's having the impact that I want. Because a lot of leaders have that idea but there's something in their life that's not, it's just not gelling, right. you know? And so there's a nagging kind of, yeah, but what if this, you know? And you can't see it yourself often. We, you know, it's like that book, The Big Leap, you know, by Gay Hendricks. Like you're really great at something and you have this zone of excellence, but you're missing the zone of genius, which is what your higher self would, would bring in. When you get out of your own way, and I don't think people can do that for themselves. And um, I've not been able to. Um, and also my, my goal in life was to completely and fully awaken to who I really am. And I think a lot of people are now having that idea that they can do that. Mm -hmm. But it takes a tremendous amount of um, inner work and you need a guide for that. You can't just, your ego is not gonna give itself up. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. There's a lot of like, hanging on for dear life that goes on in the transformation because you don't know what's what you don't know. You don't see beyond what you already know. The unknown to you is actually really scary, but that's where all the juice is. That's where all the love is. That's where all the light is, you know? So, so I can help get you there. Awesome. So you can help get people there 
when they're feeling like they really want to create a life that they dream of filled with successfulness and fulfillment and vitality and you actually help them redefine success fulfillment and vitality in a way that they can clear what may be blocking them to achieve that life that's incredible what a gift how do people get in touch with you again monica you want to share um, that when the best way would be to go to my website monicadubay.com there's a free gift you can download and you'll get my first free program which is create your life how to create your life in 10 steps and that's a basic way to manifest what you truly want um and then i do um a back to basics life mastery program which is an eight-week program it's really not expensive you can get right in and I'll, I'll teach you all that i know about my mastering your mind and you actually have to practice it in order to get to where you want to be so monicadubay.com and um you know, I'm on Facebook and LinkedIn as well. Great. Yeah. Monica, thank you so much for sharing advice that matters to us here on Michelle Hoffman's Lighter Notes. I've had so much fun. Thank you, Michelle. What a thank gift you are. <laughs> Thanks.